Welcome to section 4.7 notes. This is going to be going over how to use trig inverse functions and how to use them to solve trig equations, or at least some pretty simple equations. Uh, the first thing we need to define here is when we do inverse functions, we need to be able to understand where they're going to come from, what, we're, what our answers are going to look like. So whenever I do sine inverse, if I use my calculator to do this, um, my calculator won't always give me every possible answer. It's actually quite limited in range of what, if I plug some angle in here and say, hey, what, a, what signs, uh, what angle gives me this sign? So I could put in like one half in, and it would give me back a 30 degree angle measure, right? In this example, we're gonna be looking at what are the ranges for that, right? For sine, for cosine, and then eventually for tangent inverse functions. Sine inverse, will give me values between negative 90 degrees and positive 90 degrees. So when I'm looking for this, if I have a positive uh, value for x, I'm going to be in the first quadrant. If I'm a negative value for x, I'm going to be in the, 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 uh, the fourth quadrant. For cosine, a little bit different. Whenever I have a positive value, I'm going to be in the first quadrant, just like always. But if I have a negative value in here, I'm going to be going over into the second quadrant between 90 and pi, or 90 and 180, pi over 2 and, and pi. Uh, for tangent, my, my results are going to end up being between uh, negative 90 and positive 90, or negative pi over 2 and positive pi over 2, just like, uh, just like sine was. So if you kind of put these together, sine and tangent have the same possible ranges. Cosine is the different one. Whenever we work with with uh, the situation and you'll see in examples on the, the following pages where I'm going to do this and it actually makes my job much easier rather than having to worry about the entire unit circle where we have positives in different places or negatives in different places. I'm going to limit those for now unless it tells me to use the entire unit circle. I'm going to go ahead and just stick to these ranges. So. As I'm doing the next couple of problems, remember that I'm going to be using the ranges that you see on this page. For example, number one, we have tangent inverse of zero, right? And it's asking the question, what angle in any t any trig function angle is asking or is asking what angle can give me a tangent that's equal to zero? So tangent of some angle is equal to zero. Well. If we remember back from a unit circle, that tangent is y over x, right? So how could I get zero with two values? Well, it's something over zero. And the only place I have zeros is on the axes, right? So zero over one would be equal to zero, right? So that would become x is here, y would be there, which creates this coordinate there. Where is this? It's all the way over here at zero degrees or zero radians if you're working in radians, right? Tangent is one that's a little bit trickier because I have to worry about these coordinates, but that's how you'd look at it. Here we're looking at where's the sine equal to positive square root of 3 over 2. That reminds me of the 30, 60, 90 triangles. I just need to remember which one I'm at. I can, I can place the opposite over the hypotenuse, and I can figure out that that's going to end up giving me a 60 degree angle down at the origin, which is what I'm looking for. So this would be 60 degrees, or it would be pi over 3 if I had been asked to do it in radians. Be prepared to do both. Uh, the third example we're going to look at is a cosine function, a cosine inverse. It's saying where on the unit circle, in this case specifically in the first or second quadrant, is cosine equal to negative one-half. Now I could go back to the unit circle and look for the x-coordinate to be negative one-half. That's obviously going to be in the second quadrant because x is negative over here. But I could also take the, the approach about using the triangle method, right? So if you don't have the unit circle memorized, you could do it this way. I could go in and place my x over my hypotenuse or my adjacent over my hypotenuse like this. And I could figure out that that makes this a 60 degree angle. However, I have a 120 degree angle here, right? Because that's 120 here plus the 60 gives me the 180 or 2 pi over 3 if it's in radians. So you got two methods. You could use your coordinate method. Uh, if you know the unit circle well enough, you can kind of pull these out. Um, or I could kind of realize I've, I can create these right triangles. Uh, the, the triangle method is very useful when you have angles that are not 90, 30, 90, or 60. And they, they give you the coordinates, the sides, where I can use Pythagorean theorem to get the last side. Um, we're not really going to be dealing with those kinds of examples quite yet. And so 
this is how you could take this approach. For the composition of trig functions, this, is, this one gets a little bit trickier. Uh, notice that you have two different trig functions applied right back to back. So the first thing we do is we, we're going to work from the inside out. So if you, if you look at this, this is just like in the previous examples we looked at. So I'm going to figure out where sine, what angle gives me a sine of 1 half, right? So I'm going to kind of put that in here. The sine is opposite of our hypotenuse. I realize that that's a 30, 60, 90. So that's going to give me my 30 degrees. So I'm plugged in. So this whole thing is 30, right? So I'm going to get this thing. So what is the cosine of 30 degrees? Well, I've already got the 30 degree angle drawn. So I'm just going to say, hey, what's the cosine of this angle, right? Adjacent over the hypotenuse. And that's pretty straightforward, right? The square root of 3 over 2. Just think about this as in a two-step problem. Do the inside part first and then do the outside part. If you go back here, tangent is equal to 1. Remember, tangent of theta is equal to y over the x. Well, the only way I'm going to get 1 from the unit circle is when I have both coordinates equal to 1. So 1, 1, right? Or really, I have to remember that that's the x and the y coordinates. If I do it like this, 1, 1, that would be square root of 2. This reminds me of the 45, 45, 90 triangles. Whenever I've got tangent, I tend to default to drawing my triangles and not going directly from the unit circle. It just makes my numbers work out a lot easier. Then I can say, all right, well, what's the sine of 45 degrees, right? We're going to get the opposite over the hypotenuse, right? 1 over the square root of 2 or square root of 2 over 2. Notice that 3 is a little bit different. I've got the inverse function on the outside, not on the inside. And so here we're going to say tangent of pi over 4. So I'm going to draw 45 degrees. And then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to say, what is the tangent of 45 degrees? Well, I already knew this because it was kind of up in the top. But I would do it like this. I would say that's equal to 1. And so I think I can plug that in. What's the angle, right? What angle has a cosine of positive 1, right? Uh, and so this is kind of working backwards. Anytime you have a cosine inverse on the outside or a sine, any inverse function at all on the outside, your answers are going to be degree measures or radian measures. Whenever you have a, a traditional trig function on the outside, your answers are going to be those fractions. Could be a whole number like 0 or 1 or negative 1. Okay? The difference here is whatever. if I have an inverse function on the outside, I'm going to be expecting to get an angle measure when I do that. Right? So here we can say, where is the cosine equal to positive 1? I think about the unit circle. I think, well, x coordinate is the unit circle's value for cosine. So I think, where is a positive 1 on the unit circle? I remember positive 1 was here and here. But I want it to be the x-coordinate, so it has to be here at 0 degrees or 0 radians. Okay, So this is kind of the, 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 the harder part of this lesson, is really kind of going through these composition of functions. On the worksheet you have, uh, I want you to kind of practice these, ask questions, and remember, take it a step at a time. Do the beginning part, and then do the outside part, kind of whichever way that works out to you. If you got any questions, please feel free to email me or let me know and we'll, I'll try to get my answers questions as soon as I can.